Many a year and a day sign. When your mother was just a young girl and I was a young bit lassie, there was an old manny that came here every now and then to the market in the village. He'd a lang snaw beard and he never spak to naebody. The folk had unca stories about him and Aubody cried him the warlock. They said he stayed in a castle in the mountains and that he work it with magic. No. Jack bade with his mother in their wee button bed, and though all there was to keep them was a teeny wee bit croft, they managed to get by nae bother by tacking turns to sell a puckle eggs and vegetables in the market in the village. And whatever they sell, it was aye enough for a coin or twa to mak ends meet. Well now, Jack was aye pleased to see his mother back free selling at the market, and as I, they were both eager to show yin another than Morn's work. To which she couldn't help but say, Oh, Jack, you're no off at the fishing again. And he says, Well, mother, you ken there's been a plump of rain yesterday and that the burn's guy heavy. She says, Jack, something off is going to happen to you with all this carry on fishing. Mother, do I no bring you back bra fish? Aye, sometimes, Jack, but you're a wa for hours at a go and on burn gays on for miles up into the mountains. Well, he says, I'm a wa fishing the day, and I'm thinking to travel a good wee bit further up the burn and all. I'm going to walk a long way and get to fish to all the bits I've never fished afore. To which she cries, Jack, gin you're a wall hour far up the burn into the mountains, you'll get to the land o' the corbies, and you ken what'll happen if they come on you. Gin the corbies fund you fishing in their land, Jack, I'm telling you, you'll never come back. Mother, I'm no fear to book corbies. That's only fairy tales. There's nae sick a hing as a land o' the corbies.
So after his dinner, Jack sets off as he promised and walk it and walk it up the burn past all the places he used to fish. At the lang and last, he came to a pet that he'd never fished afore. Well, it was the lang afore he'd had a bite and then another. But it was just weans, and he decided that there was mere muckle fish to be had further on, and he carried on walking until he heard the burn drapping o'er a muckle lin. There will be a good lochin doon there, under thon lin. We a wheen fish. Gin I could mak my way out to it, he thought. Sine he step it through the wood, and fund a wheel worn path like a deer track, and followed it doon the stye brae. And when he look it up, he saw the most magnificent waterfall. He says, "This is the place for me." And there, sitting on a rock aside the lynn, was the bonniest young lassie Jack had ever seen in his life. She had the most brixsome fair hair and the most earthfully made boots made of the finest leather and carved with all the animals of the forest. Jack was mesmerised. It wasn't just that she was bonny, but sitting aside her, on her rock, was the mucklest eagle Jack had ever seen in his puff. And it was glowering at Jack. We all knew Jack Richt forgot about his fishing, and soon learned from the lassie that she was cried marigold, and her eagle was cried hungry. They stayed in the mountains, and came down here for some peace and quiet. All things were gone just fine, until, on a suddenty, she spears at Jack, gin he'd help her escape. And then she says, Jack, have you ever heard tell o' oh, the land o' oh, the corbies? Well, Jack wasna scoffing new as she tells him about who her grandfather was a warlock, and he'd fund twa fledgling corbies fawn at a tall nest, and who, because he was kind hearted, he had taen them hame wi him and turned them into young laddies, and mere nor thon, he'd made them magic boots so they could still fly, and magic rings so they could change shape. But knew her grandfather was dead, and the Corbys was growed up and off it here. If Jack could help her, she could get a war for them, o'er the mountains to her mother's land, just as she died dreamt. There she'd be soft. Then she says that she really had to be off. She was needing to be back or the sunset or the Corbys would be suspicious. And if Jack was really wanting to help her to meet we are here again the morn's morn. And then she was a wall. Well, Jack hardly noticed the way him as he thought on all this eldritch tale. He just couldn't wait for to tell his mother. As soon as his mother saw Jack come Ben, she kent something had happened. And it was na twa minutes afore Jack had poured out the hail tail. Marigold, eagles, corbies and all. Did I no tell you, Jack, she says, and you wouldn't eh, listen. A wee while later on, though, around the ingle nuke, she tell Jack 
that a year the old man had appeared in the market with twa uncle laddies that he cried his corbies, and he'd never been seen again sign. She says, things have been gone missing all over the country. Bonnie lass or no jack, they say thon corbies has glamoury poor, say nobody can catch them, and you're no wanting them to clock you. Mother, says Jack, I made a promise and my promise I'll keep. I've never seen life o' any description, and this is a challenge to me. I'm a wa the morn's morn, corbies or nae corbies. Then Jack gied his mother a good night and a wa to his bed. But of course, he rummelt about in his bed the hail nicht, and he dreamt as he'd never dreamt afore. The skiver her tell who the things have been going missing all over the Bonnie country who the land jack who the corbies they say the on corbies has glamoury poor who's never been seen again since you'd no wanting them to clock the Bonnie lass or no jack they say the on corbies has glamoury Still, Jack was on his way by the first lift, and all he could think on was whether Marigold and Hungry would be by the lynn. And sure enough, there they were, sitting on the same rock as afore, waiting on him. Jack, she says, if you're going to help me, we'll need to hurry, for the Corbys are off on any of the Ravens. We'll need to get to the castle the new Jack. Will you help me win free? Well, we all ken what his answer was, and say aft they gaed. For it wasn't just a wee donner up and out of the hill to the castle. On the way, Marigold tells Jack who her grandfather had aye rude bringing the boy Corbys into the world, even though he loved them. She tell him who her grandfather gied her hungry the eagle as a wee chick to protect her when he was a wa. She said that since she had grown up, both the Corby laddies wanted to marry her, and that to help her get a wa, she'd pockled in of their magic rings. No, they had to stay together, gin they wanted to change into something else. She tell Jack that the rings only work it three times ilk a day, and after that, you could only go back to being what you really were. Then Marigold pinked out her grandfather's graveyard down a blow and said who she'd like to pit Jack's flowers on his grave. They were just around his stage when Marigold held out the ring and pit it on Jack's finger. You look after thon, she says. You never can when we mich need it. Then, when nae mere a day they were awa into the castle, the Corby's plunder was all ower, all hither and yon. Jack couldn't help but notice twa pairs o' winged boots hanging on the wall. He weeked ower and got out his fishing knife and cut off the wings, laying a pile of feathers on the flare. He says, let's see them fly new. Next, Marigold tilt Jack to gate to the stables and saddle the twa white horses while she gather all her hings. You can take thon old cloak if you like, Jack, says Marigold, coming into the stables, but let's be a war, for it's getting hour late. And then they were off, and just in time. Afore their dust had settled, the Corbys were back with their plunder. They were looking in a boot for Marigold to show her their spoils, when any of them noticed the cut feathers on their magic boots. Gain recht gait, they ran into the stables where they saw that the two white horses was a walk. Taking out the ring, the elder Corby says, We'll, we'll they hae the whites, so we'll hae the blacks. And the chase was on.
Jack and Marigold came to a river and there was no way hour. Marigold says, Here come the corbies, Jack. What are we going to do? Just then, a young salmon loped to the water and Jack had an idea. He held up the ring. Salmon, we may be. And before he could say another word, he and Marigold were twa salmon and aft in along the bun. When the corbies came to the river, they say, Salmon, they may be. Well, Otters we will be and ah, after the salmon. The salmon are swimming fast, but the otters are swimming faster. Marigold shouted, Jack, they're catching us. We mun change again. And whip Jack richt in front of them on the bank, but a brune hair. And Jack says, Here we may be. And in twa shacks, he and Marigold were twa hairs. Aft they set o'er the muir, the otters close a hint see this and say, Hares they may be, we'll, hoons we will be. And the twa hoons set aft after the twa hares, they ran and they ran and they ran and were getting fair for fjochen. When Jack saw a pheasant's nest, neast to an old birk tree, and sitting in the nest were nine eggs. Jack thought it was a clever hiding place and says eggs we may be and then there were eleven eggs all looking the same but it was our late for the hoons had seen them disappear by the nest and they said eggs they may be we'll corbies we will be they stepped at pecking a egg two eggs when suddenly there was a rush of feathers in the lift and right down on top of them came hungry the eagle Tacking a corby and ilk a claw, he shook them until they were dead. They had tried to change their cells, but there was no way back the day. They'd used up all their changes. When they had fun their horses, or rather hungry had, they rode back to the castle, and it was right there cor they won him. Anyway, ain hing led to another, and nobody got our muckle sleep thon nicht. After all, there was plenty to talk about. The morn's morn, Marigold says, Weel, husband. The morn we can go and ask your mother to bide here with us, and later I'll visit my mother o'er the mountains. But for now, Jack, I need to put the ring in a safe place. Jack took the ring off his finger and gave it to Marigold, who promptly walked it o'er to the well and threw it in. How did you do that for Marigold? says Jack, and she replies, Jack? I love you, and you solve it my life, but I wouldn't want you to turn into something that I wouldn't like you to be, would I now? And that is the end of my story.
Chicky, chicky, chicky. Here, chicky, chicky, chicky.